Let's preserve some meals in a jar and some Mylar bag meals. Hey friends, this is Carrie's Culinary Crafts where we talk all things food. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do some of the meals in the jar and meals in these mylar bags. Um, if you haven't seen my previous video, I will link it up here um, where I did a whole video on the what and why and the hows to uh, reasons for storing up meals in a jar or meals in mylar bags. Um, this would be for like long-term storage. Uh, if you do it properly, they could be 10, 15 plus years, depending on um, the ingredients that you use. So today I'm just gonna kind of quick show you um, some breakfast here. I'm, I may get into um, some actual dinners, but if you recall from that video, I had space left for one more, um, half pint case down in that cabinet. So I wanna utilize that space. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of um, breakfast for one. Uh, flash, don't even think about it. Uh, breakfast for one, uh, just because I, I wanna utilize that space. I, I don't want dead space anywhere. You can utilize that by storing food. Um, so I'm going to go ahead right now and do some quick breakfast. And I just wanted to show you what I'm using today. I'm just using things that are opened up. I have some freeze dried blueberries here and this is opened up. So there isn't much left. And I'm also using, um, and then I have some bananas here and I have quick oats. Now you want to have quick oats for this because then this, that way, all you have to do is you can just um, boil up the water and just pour it right in the jar and just let it sit for a few minutes and it will um, reconstitute those oats. Now, quick oats or instant oats, um, if any of you shop at the Dollar Tree, that's like one of the best places to get these quick oats, $1.25 and this is a one pound bag. So it's a really good deal. Um, so if you're at the Dollar Tree and you see these, go ahead and grab them. And I also have um, some quick oats here. So since this is sealed, I'm gonna go ahead and use this first. Okay, um, so quick oats, I have the fruit, and then here is what, I have granulated honey. This is what I use as a sweetener. Now you could use sugar, um, if you want, um, I would only use brown sugar if you actually plan on eating them because brown sugar is moist and it's not going to last as long. So, um, I would recommend either using like white sugar or use granulated honey or granulated maple syrup, um, something that is like shelf stable. Uh, and then I have some... I have oxygen absorbers here. This would be for the Mylar bags. And then I have silica packs, which is what I will put in here. That makes sure that keeps the moisture out because if moisture gets inside that jar, um, it's going to ruin the ingredients that you have in there. Now I am going to vacuum seal these jars, which I'll show you that as well. So it's going to suck all that oxygen out, but just in case, like if a fail seals or something like that, or one pops later on down the road, um, if you have one of those oxygen or silica packs in there, then you won't have to worry for a period of time about um, moisture getting in there. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, also, what you're gonna need for, if you're doing the Mylar bags, uh, the easiest tool, you can use an iron, but this is the easiest tool. 
uh, one of these flat irons for hair. Um, they're not that expensive. Get one and just keep it with your Mylar bags. Like, I don't use this for anything else other than sealing Mylar bags. So it's definitely worth getting yourself one of, one of these. They are not expensive at all. So I have this on and heating up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now since I'm gonna do the majority of these in jars, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the Mylar bag first. Uh, the first thing I do when you get a Mylar bag, before you even put anything in it, I write on it what is going to be in this bag. So in here, I'm going to put, um, I think I will put oatmeal with bananas. Okay, and this is a this is bigger than this, so I think I'll make this um, for like a two person. So I'm gonna write on here. Um, oatmeal with bananas. and honey, so we know that it's sweetened. And then I'm gonna put the serving size, which is serving size two. Serving. Two. So that is what I do. Okay. So then I'm gonna go ahead and open up this Mylar bag. Now, one serving of oatmeal is a half a cup. So I'm gonna go ahead, and of course that doesn't fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in one full cup of oatmeal in here. half a cup and there's a full cup I'm gonna add a little more because you know serving sizes are very small and I have room in here so I kind of did like a cup and a half maybe Okay, so then I'm gonna put in some bananas. Now, the bananas or the fruits that you use, you can put as many or as little as you want. You don't even have to put any in it if you don't want to. But I'm trying to use up my open uh, cans because once these like number 10 cans are open, you know, the, the shelf life dwindles. So I'm trying to use up these open jars. Okay, so here, I have the granulated honey and it's calls for a serving. It calls for three tablespoons of this honey. Now these kind of scoops, like scoops that you get in um, like Gatorades and probably like some iced tea mixes and stuff like that. The ones that come in Gatorades, these are three tablespoon scoops. So it works out perfect. So I will just, Put in here, okay, so this is three tablespoons, which is equivalent to one serving, but we did two servings here. But I'm not sure I wanna do like that, the full amount, so I think I'm just gonna do half. I mean, if you like super sweet stuff, then go ahead and put the whole amount in. Although I did put extra in there, but it'll be fine. Okay. And that, that is all you do for these Mylar bags um, with the food part of it. Now the next part of it is um, 
since I don't have the special thing here that you can hook up to your food saver and suck all the air out, I'm going to go ahead and put a oxygen absorber in there. And what that's going to do is once I seal this up, it's going to start sucking out the oxygen inside that bag. So it'll prolong the life of everything that's in there. So, and I'm going to do this quick. You don't have to be a fanatic about it because these do take a while to suck up air, but you don't want to leave your lid off your jar or however you're storing them. This is the best way to store them in your, um, your canning jars with lids because the, they'll suck the oxygen from inside the jar and then it'll seal. So, did you hear that pop? Okay, so I'm just going to quickly open this. I'm going to grab one of these. And I'm going to stick it in this bag. And then I'm going to press out as much air as I can. And I'm going to go ahead and seal it with these with this Ziploc. Now, not, not all Mylar bags come with that Ziploc. So if you don't have that, well, then you won't, you won't be doing that. But I'm going to make sure that my Ziploc is sealed, which it is. And now I'm going to go ahead and seal the top part. Now, if you notice on these bags, see they have a little tear mark here. So that's if you would tear this and use some of the ingredients, but you wouldn't use all of it, you have a way to, you can seal it back up again. But this is just like the easy tear to get it open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that flat iron and this whole area up here that is open down to this zipper, I'm going to seal that with the hot iron. So I'm gonna take my sealer like this and then I'm just, you don't want to go over the zipper. You just want to go right above the zipper. And you want to hold that on there for oh, 10 seconds. And you see how that seals there? I'm going to go ahead and do it on the other side. Now this makes, this iron gets really, really hot. So even after you do that, you want to wait a bit before you even touch that edge because that edge is going to be really, really hot. And that's all you do. See, this whole section up here is permanently sealed until you go ahead and you rip that off to open it up. And with that oxygen absorber in there, it's going to suck all the air out of this packet. And this will be good to go for 10 to 15 plus years. And that is how you do the Mylar bags. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead. Now I don't need my these anymore unless I end up having more and I need to uh, do some more because I think these are the last of the half pints that I have in my storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing these and I will speed this up for you so you don't have to, um, to watch, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill up as many as I can with what's left here. And then I'll show you how to um, hook it up to the food saver and suck all the air out and seal the lids, okay? Okay, now these I'm gonna, I am gonna see whether, no, never mind. Okay. So these are servings for one, so we're gonna wanna put a half a cup. Oh, I need a funnel. We'll make this a lot less messy. Okay, got myself a funnel. And we're gonna put half a cup in. Now this is a quarter cup measuring cup, so I'll put two of these in. Okay. 
And then, now I have less of these blueberries, so I wanna go ahead and use these up first so I can get rid of this can. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in there and we need to do this. I'm not gonna do the full scoop. All right, now you see that? That fills up one whole jar, but you're still able to put your water um, inside here because all of the the honey and the oats, it's all gonna soak up that water. So you can still put the, the boiled water into this and let it sit for five minutes and it'll be fine. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up these jars and I'll speed it up for you. Almost had enough for this full thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this bag of quick oats. Now I just wanted to show you, when I store in glass containers, which glass containers are the best things to uh, store food in, um, whatever I'm putting in here, if there are directions for it, I like to tape it to the back. So if for some reason somebody wanted to make up some oatmeal, it tells you how to cook it up on the back. Okay. A little bit more in there. Okay, so then I'm just gonna dump these in there. So this about fills up half of it. So you'll know that you can get two pounds of oatmeal in one of those half gallon mason jars. So I'll have to look to see if I have another one of these packs and see if I can fill that up. But okay, so there it looks like there's a couple that are a little short. So I'm gonna put, just add a little bit more in some of them. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, some blueberries in these. And you can put as much or as little as you want. Okay, used up all the blueberries, so that is one can that we can get rid of. And then the rest, I'm gonna put in some banana pieces. I'm not too concerned about the banana pieces because my 15 year old son loves to eat these as a snack, so I usually have to hide them so he doesn't know that we have them. But since there will be a little bit left in here, I will let him go ahead and stack on them. Okay, and then we wanna pour, put in some whatever sweetener you're using. I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball this because my, my husband and I really are the only ones that eat oatmeal. I mean, of course my son would eat it if we were in a dire situation, but, and, um, but we don't like it super sweet. So if you like it really sweet, then definitely put more sweetener in it. But for us, a little bit is just fine. Okay. Now 
I have two left that's without any sweetener. I don't want to open up another honey because I'm not doing any more today. So I don't want to break that seal and open that up. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some regular sugar in these last two. And I'm just, this is a two tablespoon scoop where this is a three tablespoon scoop. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this scooper. And there we go. Now, if it, if um, I knew that we were going to be eating these soon, I could have even put brown sugar in there. I really love brown sugar and cinnamon in with oatmeal. But since this is for long-term storage, I don't want to put in brown sugar because of the moisture content that's in brown sugar um, from that molasses. So, okay, so then that is what we do with our jars. Now, what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it, is uh, how to seal these jars with a food saver. So I can get this out of the way now, since I'm not gonna need to do any more bags. Let that cool off a little. All right. Oh. I guess I'm gonna flip you over here. Okay, so here is my food saver. I usually leave it on my counter here because I will use it um, to repackage things if I get, you know, if I would happen to get meat or something from the grocery store. I, I don't wanna just stick it in the freezer like that. I want to vacuum seal it because that saves it from freezer burn and you can keep it a lot longer in your uh, freezer that way. Plug in my vacuum sealer. And I need the regular mouth lid here. So, and the first thing you do is you need to make sure you're plugged in and on. And then I'm going to put the lid on your jar. Nope, I'm gonna have to take them out. Can't do it that way. And then I'm gonna put the sealer over top. And then my food saver has this little handheld sealer that you pop right in here. And as soon as you push that in, you push the handheld button and it'll start vacuuming. And then when it stops, then you're okay to pull the lid off. And you have to pull this off first and then you can pull this off and your jar is sealed. But that just reminded me, I forgot to put the silica packs in it. So that one is not going to have one in it because I'm not going to unseal it just to put it in. But these are the silica packs, which make sure that we keep moisture out. They are not oxygen absorbers. They are silica packs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in those jars. The nice thing about silica packs, if you're not familiar with them, other than the fact that, you know, they keep moisture out, uh, you can rejuvenate silica packs. Uh, what you need to do is you put them on a, like a cookie sheet or something and lay them out flat. And if you put them in the oven at a, like a really low temperature, I forget what it is, 200 or something like that for like 20 minutes, 
it like rejuvenates them. Okay, so let's, I will speed this up so you don't have to watch the entire process uh, again, but we're just putting the lid on, putting the top on, whoops, connecting our vacuum sealer, and then pushing the hand held vacuum button. It goes off and the light goes off, then that means it's safe to pull off the vacuum sealer and pull off this. Ta-da. Okay, I will speed this up for you guys so you don't have to sit here and watch all of me do all of these. Now that I got all of my jars sealed up, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up here and then I'll show you what I do with the tags that I put on them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these silica packs inside this jar as well for storage. Okay, so the last step that I have here is to put these tags on the jars. Um, now you can also do stickers, whatever you want, but I have a whole bunch of these tags. So even though it's a pain in the butt to manually write on them, if I only do like a dozen at a time, it's not so bad. Um, but these little tags have these little little strings on them that you put put through like so. Now when I got them, I was hoping that these were long enough to just fit around. Unfortunately, they're not, but that's okay because I still will figure out how to use them. So you just put it in there and then on, on the one side, I write what it is that is in the jar. Like this is blueberry oatmeal with honey. I want to say that it has the honey in there because that way we know that it's sweetened or anybody else knows that it's sweetened. So oatmeal with blueberries. And honey. See, oatmeal with blueberry and honey. And then on the other side, you wanna write how to um, cook up what is in your jar. So, just to make sure I get my numbers right, let me open up my book here. And there's a section in the back that is um, uh, breakfast for one. See, breakfast for one, and then there's several different recipes of breakfast back here. Okay, so let's see. I forgot I should have put some flax seed in with these. Oh well. Wasn't paying attention. Okay. So with these, I want to do um, three quarters of a cup of boiling water. Now, 
you could use super hot water too. You just may have to let it sit for a little bit longer. But remember, these are instant oats, so they don't take long. You, you know, they don't have to, you don't have to cook them for 20 minutes or anything like that. So I'm going to put add three quarter cup boiling water and then let sit five minutes. Now, obviously, if you like your um, oatmeal thinner, then you could just add a little bit more liquid, you know, once it's like reconstituted. If you like it thicker, then add less. Okay, so there is, one side has what it is, the other side has the directions on what you need to do. And then I put a ring on so it holds this in place. Plus, it's another way to you hold up, you know, your rings. We have hundreds and thousands of rings. So it's another way to go ahead and just use them up. Um, but that's it. And even if you yourself think you'll remember how to do these and don't think you need a tag, Remember if you need to hand this to somebody else or if somebody else, if you're sick or in bed or, or something and you aren't the one cooking it, you want to have directions for somebody else to know how to do it. And also, like I said, if you do a care package or if you hand these out to somebody, the directions are on it. And that is all you do. I'm not gonna bore you with me doing the rest of these, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these on. I'll speed it up for you, and then I will get this down in that one spot down there in that cupboard that I can fit one more case of half pints, and then that cupboard is full. Okay, bananas, bananas. Bananas, blueberries, blueberries, bananas, bananas. Okay. Okay, friends, so there you have it. There is a dozen more of the half pint breakfast for one. I'm gonna go ahead and stick them down in my cabinet down here. Uh, this will be the last case that will fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finagle down in there and then I will show you the cabinet. Okay guys, there is my cabinet. We are now two rows deep and four high. We got two rows of quartz, then we have pints, and then on top we have the half pints. And we have two rows of those. All that fitting in one cabinet. Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will bring you along with me the next time that I go ahead and do uh, some more meals in a jar. I still have some ground beef that I want to use up, but I want to figure out uh, what I'm going to make with it. So I hope you enjoyed this. And here is, as you can see, the, um, the one that I did in the Mylar bag. It's already, the air is already sucked out of it. It's nice and tight, and it'll continue to do that till there's nothing left. And I'm going to go ahead and store this in my Mylar bags. I store them in some other kind of um, container. What? Flash? No. 
uh, whether it's you know a five or six gallon bucket or if it's just one of those plastic totes that you can get I will store them in that as well so and I hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any questions comments leave them down below and make sure you give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button until next time bye friends